Yo, what's going on? So we have a lot to learn today and I'm gonna try and keep it as short and sweet without getting carried away. I was supposed to film and hit record an hour ago, but I've just been jamming and I can't stop sometimes. I need help, please send help. Anyway, today we're gonna to be talking about how I have launched, whoa, how I have mapped my Launch Control XL to my OctaTrack for my live performance. I wanna show you how I did it, how it's set up and what it's doing, which I think is probably one of the best ways to set it up. I know there's a bunch of different templates out there. This template, if you are a part of the little YouTube membership thing down below, I'm gonna package this up and send it off to you so you can use it in case you got one of these Launch Control XLs as a thank you, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, all right, let's get into it. I'll show you how to map it as well using your computer. So it's pretty dope. Check this out. Say I got a track like this. What I've done is I've gone and mapped all eight tracks, including this master main track right here at the very end on all of these knobs. I got my low pass. Right, and then let's say I got some drums coming in, which will be on this track five. I even have a high pass. And it's the same across all the rows. And then I even have my delay, right? Or let's say, let's say for example, track five actually has um, a dark reverb here. What this knob on the bottom will do is on effects page two, be knob number six, parameter number six. And that's what this knob will always be set to. So if I move this up, you can see that my mix knob's kind of moving right there on its own. So now let's say our drums have a reverb. Right, I can bring it up. Pretty simple. And okay, so I've also built two separate templates here. One that controls the amp level on our faders and then one that controls the track level. You can tell the difference by whichever one is green. Green is gonna to be to our amp level. I put green because green's kind of go for me, right? And amp level will be when they're set to red. Ignore this section, that's just to kind of break it up into four and four. So I know that this is always track five and this is always track one, in case I need to jump to my drums real quick. But the faders is what we're talking about here. I personally prefer amp control. So if we look at track five, this, moving our amp control more then moving our track level. Why? Listen to this. Say we got this going, and I send it to this uh, little reverb here, right? So we got a crazy long reverb, and then I go and I want to pull out the track. Everything goes. Even if I wanted to mute this, it mutes everything. So that's track level. But if I go into amp level, which is here in this, check this out. It's before the effects. Track level is after the effects. So this allows you to do almost like a send, right? So if you like working with track levels, you just switch it over to user template one, which will be indicated if this is red, and this will be indicated if it's green, and this is gonna be your amp levels. I personally prefer amp levels for that reason. I don't really know the benefit. You might know a benefit down below of using track levels over amp levels. Maybe if it's you wanna parameter lock some stuff, who knows, um, but I'm gonna be sticking with the amp level setup. And then under that, we have um, this section, which is supposed to be cues. And it will, for whatever reason, not cue my tracks because if my tracks are cued, they'll flash. But this doesn't do my cues. And I wrote down all of the parameters. Cues MIDI CC 47. And that's what these are set to, zero to 127. When they're off, it's zero. When they're on, it's 127. The one thing that sucks about the Launch Control XL, for whatever reason, this does not light up and give you any kind of feedback. And technically, these don't really give you any feedback other than just staying on. And I kind of wish that these stayed on. But I couldn't get Q to work. Q doesn't work, but mutes work. So I have tracks one through four, muting. Tracks five through six, muting. I can't mute eight because that is, again, set to master track on the Octatrack. That's pretty much it. Low pass, high pass, effects, amp or track level, and then muting your tracks. And this is 
what kind of helps make this a bit more fun and playable because again, if we were to play this, I can say, let's go. And then start bringing this up. And then let's say I send this up. And we jump to another song. Oh, no, that makes sense. So you might have heard how literally everything came back in and was set around. One downside about this setup is you have to be cognizant of where your knobs and your faders currently are because when you jump to a different bank or if you jump to a different part, which if you haven't seen this video yet, I essentially have four parts in each bank. So every time I jump to a new bank, I need to make sure that I kind of wiggle my knobs to catch them before they change. So let's say I was on um, this pattern here. Right, and say I wanted to fade track one all the way down and then jump to 14. This one, I caught it. But let's say this is up and I wanna jump to another pattern Let's just jump over to six. Let's see what this is. Right, so your, your values are gonna be jumping. You have to make sure that you fade things up. So like, say I have this up and I fade it down and I wanna jump over to this track here. I have to wiggle it. There, you have to stay moving. You have to stay moving, otherwise things will start popping up and popping around for you, which you might not want. So if I go like this, open this up. See, it jumped down, but you just wiggle it a little bit and it'll send it. There's no way around this. There's no way that the OctaTrack can read what this is not sending because you can notice when I move this, there's a tiny little dot that pops up right there in the corner uh, by your tempo, that just means it's receiving MIDI CC information. And when these are staying stationary, it's not receiving any information unless you're wiggling those knobs. And again, that happens per bank as well as per parts, because I mean, either way, when you're changing banks, you're basically changing parts. So it's pretty much per parts. So be wary of that in case you're fading a bunch of things down and you want things to kind of disappear. Um, let me see something really quick. If I go and look at my track level, yeah, see, I was thinking maybe here's the benefit of using track level is that track levels across a whole bank, but it's not, it's still per pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift that up. The other um, cool thing about the way I was able to map these is you might notice that if we go and go to our amp mode, right? Amp level mode instead of track level, our amp level doesn't go past zero. That's because the editor of the Launch Control XL for your computer is actually really good in letting you set where it starts and where it ends. I could even be very specific and say, I only want my low pass to go this far, or I only want my high pass to go this far, or when I push this down, only be this amount. You know what, I guess I might as well show you how that is set up now. Um, but let me let me do one more little kind of jam here so you can kind of hear this whole thing in action. So let's say we're on bank one, we're in this pattern here, and forgive my drums, I uh, forgot to back up my Digitact and lost everything, so I'm gonna have to be redoing those again for the billionth time. It's all good, it happens. But uh, I got some crappy drums for now, right? So let's say this is here, right? We go to the next pattern. We're at this track, cool. Let's go to this next track. Take those parts out. You heard a little pop there. That's just my sample, don't worry about that. This is the big breakdown. Right. And bring this up, a little delay. this 
part, cool. Right, where do we go from here? I can start fading this part down. And then just leave it into the bass line. Then it goes into the little part here. So now, see, I faded track one down. When I jump to the next thing, I need to keep wiggling this. You heard it. You heard it there a little bit. And then of course the drums are gone, but it's only because I last, I mean, I've been jumping back and forth between patterns. So the drums were kind of just Dr. Gonzo right now because they had some crazy settings from the last time I was on this pattern. When I go to play this live, I'm gonna to have to do a run through and clean everything up and make sure it's exactly where I want it to be when that pattern or that part starts. But that's kind of the idea. You kind of get it. And uh, yeah, let's figure out how to set this thing up for your Octatrack. And like I mentioned before, if you're a little short on time, check the link down below to grab this template for free. Appreciate you. All right, let's jump to the laptop. Oh, and another quick note, the way I have the launch control connected to the Octatrack is, um, if you haven't seen this video, I found this module by, oh, man, I can never remember the name, Tube Tech? I gotta be saying that wrong. It's this company. But they make this module that takes USB, which is connecting this and powering it without hearing any buzzing sounds, and then using just this little cable here, the dongle, right? The dongle of truth. Um, it's going into the Octatrack and converting USB to MIDI. Incredible module. Again, thank you for making that. It is a life saver. So on the computer, uh, you just go to components.novationmusic.com. Uh, I'll put a link to it down below. And you're just gonna connect your Launch Control XL. So I'm gonna unplug it here. I got a little, uh, another dongle. My whole life runs around dongles. Um, manage Launch Control XL. So this is this, it's popping up here. I'm already logged in. You actually need to log in if you want to save and upload these um, templates, especially if you downloaded the one that I have for this. Um, so make sure you have an account, it's really easy. I don't, I've never received like spam messages or anything from them, so that's cool. But here I have OT main tracks, OT main amps. If I click this, this here shows you exactly what's going on. This knob is MIDI channel one CC35, right? Which if we look at this, tells us 35 is our low pass filter. And what's the minimum value, what's the max value, and what's the LED channel, what the heck is this? LED MIDI channel? I have no idea what that means. Maybe that's to respond to MIDI being sent back to it. Who knows, ignore that, or don't touch it. And that's pretty much it. You, it's very tedious, you gotta go one by one by one by one. You know, set them all to MIDI CC45, which corresponding channel they are and make sure none of your other gears on that same channel. I had to dedicate the eight MIDI channels to the Octatrack and then I'm gonna have to swap Digitac to be MIDI channel 12 and then my peak to be on MIDI channel 12 because I originally had that on MIDI channel three but that's now taken up by here. And if I'm moving this and this is set to MIDI channel three which is track three but then peak is also on MIDI channel three and this is all connected. I'm gonna start moving stuff on peak when I'm trying to move stuff on just track three. So I need to make sure everything is completely separated. And same here, check this out. Look, CC message type, um, what is it? 47, that's supposed to be our cue. MIDI channel five, track five, minimum zero, max 127 and set to toggle mode, not momentary. Doesn't work, but whatever. And if we go ahead and say show values, this shows you all the knobs that can be mapped. So if I really wanted, I could even map these here, these two and these two to like jump through tracks, do record armings, fill button maybe, I don't know. You just have to check out the Octatrack appendix and that is Octatrack manual. I'll link this down below as well. Basically all the way at the very end. Okay, cool, here we are. Uh, note mapping and then where's our appendix? Here it is. So you're gonna have the appendix um, is gonna have your hex numbers or hexadecimals, I'm guessing, hex, whatever. Ignore that, look at look for the DEC. This is, um, I don't even know what DEX stands for, DEC. But 
just use that number. That's going to be your MIDI CC number. And you can see FX parameter 2, number 6, 45. Boom, that's here. I think these are the most important things that need to be mapped. And then once you kind of go ahead and map all this stuff up, you'll say here, send to launch control. Where do you want to send this, right? So let's just go ahead and say, let's set these two to red just so we can see something actually happening. Where do I want to send this to? Let's send it to number three, overwrite template. Boom, you saw that happen. If I hold down user, I can select one, two, or three, the one that I just made with those two red dots. And that's it, it gets saved into here. You unplug it from your computer, plug it back into whatever your USB to five pin is. Boom, shows up and bam, we're already on user number three, but I'm gonna leave it on number two, which is my amp setup. Number one, if you're looking for those track levels. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I covered all this and its pitfalls. There are some annoyances, but once you kind of learn them, once you kind of get used to them, it's not that bad. So I hope to see you again, my friend. And until next time, I appreciate you a ton, more than you know. And uh, yeah, share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Yep, there it is. Man, I really gotta do something about these drums. These things suck. <laughs>